Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. You ready for another episode of my Bigfoot sighting? All right then. Let's do this. Seen a bunch of run-down no-horse towns where the church is the backbone, loves in the bow. And the five-string melodies grooving. With the farm and rows where the roots run deep. Beyond the noise of the busy streets. Where the songs of the south are soothing. When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out. I don't run from banjo music. Yeah. My Bigfoot sighting happened in, I believe it was around 1995. I was about 14 years old. But before I get into the main encounter that I had, there were a lot of other strange occurrences that happened around my home. And so I'm going to just give a little bit of background information. I was actually raised by my grandparents, my younger brother and I, and my granddaddy did pipeline construction work. In his younger years, they moved all over the state and they eventually um, settled down in another part of the state from where they were born and raised. And they lived there for uh, over 20 years. When it started getting close to time for my granddad to retire, he purchased some property in their hometown in North Mississippi, where he and my grandmother had been born and grown up. And he intended on building a home there and moving us all back closer to family so that when he did retire, you know, we would be back close to his brothers and sisters and all of his friends. So during this time, when my grandfather had purchased this property, there was the main road through this place where he was going to move us to was being expanded from a two-lane highway to a four-lane highway. So another property adjacent to the land that he had just bought with a house already on it came up for sale. They thought, you know, this is perfect. We'll buy this place and we can live in this other house until our new house is built. So they bought it. We fixed the house up and moved in right before school started my seventh grade year. And just to kind of explain the property, this fixer upper house and the new house, even though the main highway comes right in front of the houses, it's still a rural area. There's many, many acres of woods behind this property. And there's also a um, river bottom and a wildlife management area beyond that. So to explain how the layout of the land, this little fixer upper house, the woods come right up in behind it, but also where the new house was built, the woods also come right up behind it. And there's a certain area of woods that would have been on the east side of the new house and then come up behind the fixer upper house. It kind of joined that little area of woods, kind of joined the property together. And so in that area is where we had a lot of the um, activity. The first thing I'm going to tell you about happened when we, were, when we were still living in the fixer upper house. On and off during this time, my biological mom lived with us and she was living with us then. And my grandparents and younger brother had decided to go out to eat and I didn't want to go. I stayed home with mom and my mom, she smoked. So this was probably about eight or nine o'clock at night. We went out on the back patio. Mom was having a cigarette. We had a dog and the dog was out there with us. And the first thing I noticed that was strange was that the dog kept looking over to this particular area of the woods, the one I was describing before that kind of joined the property together and was just like a really dark creepy corner back there the dog's hair was standing up on the back of his neck and he wasn't barking or growling but he just kept 
looking and acting very nervous over into this area. So as my mom and I are standing there talking, we hear this sound come from the woods and it's hard to really even describe I guess a growl somewhere in between a growl and a snarl it was extremely loud and low you could you could kind of feel it like reverberate like the vibrations of it at this time the dog tucked his tail ran to the back door wanting in the house my mom and I were just you know kind of looking at each other like what in the world was that and about this time we hear the sound again so we run in the house lock the doors and don't go back out again that night it's the main thing that I remember happening early on when we first moved to this property so you fast forward about roughly a I guess a year later we moved into the to the new house it's I'm thinking that it must have been early June mid-June because uh I had been out of school for a few weeks it was summer vacation and about a week before my main encounter I was up late one night. I used to like to sit up late and watch television after the rest of my family went to bed. It was probably one or two o'clock in the morning and I'm in the living room watching TV. Our living room was on the back of the house and there were French patio doors. So you could see the backyard and the woods, you know, beyond. And I'm, I'm sitting there watching television and this huge hand comes up and smacks the patio doors hard enough that the glass in the doors rattled. I didn't see, I couldn't see the creature who this hand belonged to. It must have, it was hiding behind the wall of the house, I guess. The hand was dark colored maybe even black. The palm of the hand is what smacked the glass and I could see hair, but not on the palm side. It was kind of like where a person's wrist or forearm would be. I could see brownish hair. I didn't see any, I mean, I couldn't see anything about its fingernails or anything like that. It, and it, And I literally just saw it for a split second because when this happened and I saw this hand come upside the door, it scared me. And so I just, I just jumped up and ran. I ran upstairs and got in the bed. I left everything on in the house and went to bed. And I didn't, I didn't tell anybody about this. I didn't tell my, my grandparents or even my brother because I, I felt like they would think that I was being silly or it was my imagination or, you know, whatever. My grandparents were very no-nonsense people. And any time that you saw or, you know, said you saw something outside of the ordinary, they would just say things like, that's just your imagination playing tricks on you, or you're just being silly, that type of thing. So about a week later, on the day of my encounter, I was in bed and my grandmother came and she yelled up the stairs at me that she and my brother were going to go to town that she had to go and deposit some money in the bank and that they were going to go get breakfast and she wanted to know did I want to go with them and I didn't I decided to stay there but I did get up when she yelled up at me and so I got on up, I went downstairs, I fixed myself a cup of coffee about the time, you know, that I got down there in the kitchen, I could hear the garage door closing and my grandmother was driving away to the bank. I went over and sat down in their house. They had a dining room, but they also had a breakfast room and this breakfast room 
was on the back side of the house, like our living room. And it was glass. It had a lot of windows. Pretty much the whole wall was glass. And you could see out into the backyard and into the woods in the same area where you could see out of those living room patio doors. So I'm sitting there drinking my coffee, getting awake, and I can see something moving in the woods. And at this point, I'm facing like towards the east. I'm seeing this movement probably a a football field away at this point. It's just, you know, something moving. And I'm I thought to myself, well, it's deer because we had a very well used deer trail behind the house. We would watch the deer. That was like a daily ritual at the house, you know, drinking our coffee in the morning and, and watching the deer move through. So I don't know why at that point, the whole thing slapping the door didn't come to mind, but it didn't. It never crossed my mind. I'm just thinking, oh, it's deer. So I get up and I walk to the the patio doors in the living room so I can see better. And I end up actually going outside the patio doors and still I'm watching this movement like the sun was still kind of coming up and so what I'm seeing right now is is kind of like a shadow moving as it gets closer I realize that whatever this is is not walking on four legs that it's walking on two so at that point I, it kind of scares me a little bit because you know this is private property Nobody's supposed to be back there. I thought it was a person at first. And, you know, I'm there by myself. And I'm I'm looking at this thing. Of course, by this point, it's getting closer. And I begin to realize that this could not possibly be a person. And the first thing that struck me as odd is that it was all the same color, not like a person that you would see, you know, wearing clothes, whereas their shirt would be one color and their pants would be another color. So for a split second, I'm thinking this is a person dressed in head to toe camouflage. And then I realize as I look closer that it's not a person in camouflage, that this thing is covered and hair. And I realize that it's impossibly large. If I had to guess, I would say that it was easily eight feet tall, if not taller than that. And and just not only tall but broad. I was a small you know, teenager at the time, I was about five feet tall. And I can remember thinking to myself that this thing is as wide as I am tall. And so still at this point, it's kind of facing me. So I'm getting a frontal view of it at this point. But it's not close enough for me to really see. I mean, I can't see facial features or any small details, but mostly just the size of it. Its arms were very long. They hung down nearly to its knees, not quite. And it it would swing its arms as it walked. And then its torso was long. Like the top part of it was longer than the bottom part. So at this point absolutely frozen in fear because I've realized, I mean, it's, I distinctly remember thinking to myself, I am standing here in my backyard looking at Bigfoot. I mean, this is, you know, I can remember thinking this is really happening right now. And I just kind of stood there. My, I was shaking. My heart was pounding trying to understand what was going on. And finally, I had sort of a moment of clarity, I guess. And I realized 
I was probably in danger. So I, the house, there's a little alcove sort of to the left side of the patio doors. And I kind of ducked back in that little alcove and crouched down trying to hide because this thing is still, I mean, this entire time, which I mean, it feels like an eternity, but I'm sure, you know, this has happened in a, in a very short amount of time. But this entire time, this thing has never slowed down. It's never stopped. It's, it's walking very quickly, very purposefully in my direction. And so I just, I duck down and hide. It never slows. It never stops. It keeps walking. At this point, it's walking parallel to the back of the house. Probably about 25, 35 yards away, still up in the edge of the woods, but it's close enough at this point that I can see it very well. It's walking parallel to me, so I'm getting a profile view of it now. And the thing I remember most as I watched it walk by was how it walked. It walked, I mean, it was so unlike the way that a human walks. Like, that's the one thing that has stood out in my mind for all these years. And it's a hard thing to describe, but it it would pick its feet up much higher than a person would when they would walk. Yet, its head didn't bob up and down or move as it went by. It was very smooth and graceful and fluid. Um, even though it was walking through the woods, you know, the ground was uneven. There's rocks, there's roots. And it was just very, very graceful and smooth. It was, it's, its hair was a dark brown color. It wasn't really long. But down towards the bottom of its arms and the bottoms of its legs, it was longer in those areas. And as it got really close to me, there's sort of a thinned out place there in the woods and the sun was shining and the sun was shining down in between the trees. And as it walked by there, the light shined on its hair and I could see red like a red tint to its hair when the sun would shine on it so it walks by I'm crouched down hiding it never stopped what it was doing it never looked at me I don't know if it even knew that I was there I don't know how it couldn't have known because I had been standing right out in the open and I still wasn't very hidden I was just up against the house and it had been facing me to begin with you know walking towards me so I don't know that if it didn't know I was there, maybe it didn't care. It was looking out in front of it, sort of down at the ground, and it was making a noise, like a, I call it a snorting noise, like it was sniffing. So I, you know, later, after I was grown and I would think about it a lot, I wondered if it wasn't uh, maybe tracking following the deer that would come through there at any rate it was not paying any attention to me I listened to it walk on by I stayed crouched down there until I didn't hear anything moving anymore and when I didn't I jumped up and ran into the house and called a neighbor because I was scared to death and um of course I couldn't tell the neighbor what I had just seen. So I I just told the neighbor and my grandparents that I saw a person in the woods, you know, that it startled me. And I never I never told the truth until till much later. Until after my brother had a similar experience, which I'll explain in a minute. The experience that my brother had was a good I'm going to say two to three years later, I was probably 
I was driving. So I was probably 16, 17. My brother was probably 12. So in the time in between my having seen this creature and then the experience my brother had, there was a lot of very strange and unusual things that happened around our house. My grandfather built a shop in the woods and it was in that same area that I talked about earlier that was, it kind of joined the properties together. It was real dense woods, very dark and creepy. And, you know, that was the same area that my mom and I heard that growl come from. So my grandfather built a shop in those woods. You would actually have to walk a path through the woods or drive through the backyard and into a little drive into the woods to go to the shop. And during this time in between my encounter and what happened with my brother, there was just a lot of weird stuff. There was motion sensor lights on the shop. They were constantly coming on all hours of the night. We were hearing noises out there. The things at the shop would be moved around and tinkered with. My grandfather thought that, you know, we had people coming and bothering his things, but nobody ever stole anything. The the stuff would just be moved around. For instance, he had several tree stands that he would just have leaning up against a tree or the building or whatever. He would leave it one place and come back out and, and it would be moved. Things that or outside of the shop, moved around. And then another thing that would happen was they always had a huge garden. And living out in a rural area, deer were always getting into our garden. And so my grandfather had this thing he would do where he would put stakes up around the garden and string a piece of yarn. And then on the yarn, he would poke holes in metal pie plates and and string them on this string. And this, I guess the sound they made or or whatever was supposed to scare away deer. We would get up and the string would be taken down and the pie plates would be taken off the string and the pie plates would be neatly stacked beside the garden. And so we always thought that was very weird you know why would somebody do that another thing that happened was that I got woke up one night two or three o'clock in the morning my room was on the second floor of the house but it was over on the side of the house closest to the woods where the shop was and I heard a deer making it it was making a bleeding noise like like something was after it, like it was scared or hurt and it was loud enough and went on long enough that it woke me up from a sound sleep, which I just really thought was odd. And so all of this stuff, I mean, there were other things. We would hear strange noises in the woods all the time. Even my grandparents, not ever thinking for a minute that there was anything strange out there would, you know, my grandfather would come in and say, I heard some kind of animal. I can't figure out what it was. I mean, that was that was something that happened a lot. Also, during this time, my mother lived with us again, and she had a little RV, and she parked her RV in front of this shop in the woods. And she would tell my grandparents all the time that she could hear something or someone on two feet walking around her RV late at night and messing with the RV, pushing on it and and making noises out there. And my grandparents would always tell her, you know, it's just deer. It's, you know, it's just this, it's just that. And she would be very adamant about the fact that no, it was not deer, that it didn't have four feet, that it had two. So my brother's encounter, like I said, it happened when I was about 17. He was probably about 12. 
he had just gotten a brand new four wheeler. I think actually he had brought it home that day. And so of course he had been riding it all evening. He came in and went out to the shop to wash it off before going in at night. And it was right at dusk. It was getting dark. He was standing at the back of the shop with his back to the woods, hosing the four-wheeler down. And he heard a noise that sounded like a limb snap. He turns around to see what the noise is. And standing behind him, he said about 15 feet away is a creature standing on two legs and he described it as having the face or the head of a dog when he turned around and looked at it he said that it showed him his teeth and growled at him or snarled at him and he threw the water hose down and just ran to the house I had been gone when this actually happened I came in My brother was very upset and kind of storming off when I came in and my grandparents were kind of, they were kind of laughing about it. They were, you know, saying, you know, I was asking what was going on and they were saying, oh, your brother saw Booger Man in the woods. And um, of course that struck a chord with me because I had here, I had seen this creature, you know several years before and had never told anyone. So when they told me that he had seen some kind of creature in the woods, I thought, well, now he's seen it too. So I went and um, talked to him about it. He was very frustrated with him because it had absolutely traumatized him. And he was trying to talk to him about it and they just wasn't having it. And I asked him to tell me the story or whatever. And and so at that point, once he had seen what he saw, I told him and my grandparents, you know, that I had also seen something in the woods out there. And I questioned him a lot about it because what I saw did not, I mean, I, I kind of wanted to think that it was the same creature because we had pretty much seen it in the same place in that same creepy patch of woods over to the the east side of the house where whatever it was seemed to hang out and you know that was a a few years in between there but it wasn't too terribly far apart the sightings weren't so I kind of thought you know well maybe just in his fear So I kind of questioned him about what did he see? And he was absolutely adamant that the animal that he saw had the head of a dog and big, sharp fangs. Whereas what I saw did not, it had a flat face. I mean, it didn't have a snout or, you know, a muzzle or anything like that. I didn't see any ears and its body arms and legs were very reminiscent of a person it, they they didn't look it didn't have hawks like a dog would or anything like that it was much more human like than what he described so i don't know if we saw two completely different things or what but that is my story and I guess that's all I've got. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run down new horse towns where the church is the backbone loves in the bow. And the five string melodies groove in. Where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down Home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah